Winwood may be primarily known for its artwork, but the community shares a common interest in recycling as well. Store owners have found creative ways to incorporate what many would consider waste into their craft. Tricycle is a prime example. This is Tricycle. We've been open for about three months. And what we do here is um, we renovate and reuse furniture and home accessories. And we try to reinterpret them by using recycled or found materials. Um, in the case of upholstery fabrics, it means that we're using designer remnants or bolt ends. We're not cutting any fabric off the bolt. Tricycle owners Beth and Mariela's work goes far beyond a simple restoration. We're not trying to just do a reproduction or a restoration. We're really trying to give it a different context. So a lot of times we're using very contemporary fabrics or colors on vintage pieces and it gives it an entirely different look. It's like one of a kind piece. And that's kind of what we're going for. Using only recycled materials does, however, make things a bit more difficult. Well, when you recover a piece of furniture and you're only using remnants, oftentimes you don't have enough fabric to cover the entire piece, so you have to combine two things together. You know, when you have just every possible option open to you in terms of materials and um, pieces and custom this and custom that, um, it's very gratifying to make something that looks even better than those things out of things that are recycled. Beth and Mariela gladly embrace the history that comes along with each piece they restore. I mean, every owner of a piece of furniture adds another layer of its history to it. Um, and I love that about it. I love to think that it's kind of, you know, witnessed lots of different people's lives. but. Um, also, practically, things were made so much better back then that, you know, it may need to be recovered, but the actual bones of the piece are of a quality that you really can't find today. The tricycle owners have a philosophy they hope will catch on. There's no need to keep making and keep making. I mean, we shouldn't be throwing things out all the time. You can actually take what you have and with a little bit of imagination and a little bit of elbow grease, you can turn it into something completely new and we're really trying to kind of put forward that philosophy. They really have put this philosophy into practice. Aside from using only recycled materials on their pieces, they've even used shredded magazines rather than tissue paper when packaging the items that are purchased. Just around the corner from Tricycle is another eco-friendly store called Podge. The store owner also works with furniture, but in a totally different way. Most of my pieces are made out of bamboo, plywood, and it's imported from China, and it comes in, in, in large uh, plywood sheets. I know about the material, and it's, it's, uh, I, I just wanted to work with wood, and I was looking for a material uh, which would be ecologically responsible to use. Bamboo basically is, uh, it, it's not really a wood, it's a grass, but it has many, many qualities that any good quality wood would give you, but you don't need to kill a plant to harvest it. You just harvest uh, the sprouts that you need to use and the plant is still alive and in two years you can harvest it again. Facundo makes a conscious effort not to waste a single piece of bamboo. I try to use as much of it as possible and waste as little of it as possible. Out of, out of uh, furniture cuts come a lot of little pieces that are waste. Sometimes they're rectangles or squares, sometimes they're soft shaped pieces and I always find a good use for them. Um, you know, if it, it might become a, a, a candle holder, it might become um, whatever, a serving platter or a cutting board or, or a mirror frame. But, and then when I cut a mirror frame out of a soft shape, I also get waste out of that. And I keep finding uses for each little piece of waste and, until it just becomes uh, powder and you can't use it anymore. Aside from bamboo, Facundo also finds ways to create furniture out of waste items that he often discovers in the most unexpected places. Now when I do um, pieces with reused materials like uh, aircraft parts or, or, or bathtubs or whatever, I basically walk around junkyards and aircraft graveyards and stuff like that looking for pieces. 
There are several factors that go into consideration when choosing materials. It has to be um, noble materials, materials that are good, that can last really centuries. The other thing that I look for is things that have to do with, with human proportions. The clawfoot bathtub or, or the antique bathtub, which was designed by a, by a French engineer, I don't know, 150 years ago. It's perfectly well designed for the human body. Uh, it, it takes into account the possibility of a person resting there for about an hour or so. Paj also looks for objects that have an interesting history. It has to tell me something in terms of history. I'm not just saving material or saving a nice piece or object. I'm saving its history, its biography. So a bathtub from the 1920s, we're talking about a bathtub which has been around for a century. So I try to, when I look at it, I start tripping in my mind and thinking how many people bathed on it. Maybe somebody was born in it in the 1930s. Uh, maybe somebody made love in it. Facundo hopes people will continue his legacy in years to come. Hopefully 100 years from now, somebody else is gonna pick it up from a junkyard or from uh, the backyard of an old house or a farm or something, and that they're gonna decide to reuse it and save it and give it a second life or even a third life or whatever. Another Winwood store spreading the eco-friendly message is Echois. Echois features bracelets, belts, handbags and even clothing all handmade from waste such as defective wrappers and soda tabs. We get them from, from different suppliers. Uh, we sometimes buy them, but uh, nowadays we have agreements with different companies and many of them donate their, their paper. You know, obviously going after Coke and uh, Frito-Lay and Mars and all those companies uh, definitely gives you um, an advantage, you know, to go out to the market, to be associated with, with this brand. Helen and her sons actually got the idea for Equois when they found a coin pouch made from wrappers while vacationing in Mexico. Once they started their business, they decided to give back to the community that inspired them by opening the production factories in Mexico, as well as Peru. We are actually moving most of the production to Peru, uh, where a group of female artisans uh, is taking care of all the production. One of my sons uh, knew somebody that knew this, this group of people, of women actually, that they were working with other recycled materials. So my son actually taught them this technique and uh, they started from there, from there on. They made their own, actually their own company and they started to employ, you know, their husbands, who were out of a job because in Peru nowadays getting a job it's kind of difficult. Helen hopes the products will inspire others to find ways to save waste from being discarded into landfills. If you just look around what's going on, you know, the mounds of, of garbage that are thrown and that you see all over, I mean, you really have to be aware and awaken people's conscience and, and awareness actually. Just be more grateful because this, this amazing world, it's not going to last much if we keep on polluting. Echois has even created a partnership with Trees for America. We take from nature and now we're giving back to nature. And um, for every bag that we sell, we, we plant a tree. They've been planted somewhere around 80,000. Echois products can be purchased either in the store or online at their website www.echois.com.